much. Could the solution to the nation's unemployment problem be close the borders for five years? That's one of the propositions in a new book by Rob Savani. His previous books have focused on Mideast politics, but the new book, Press 2 for English, dives right into the emotionally charged issue of immigration reform. He argues that a flood of immigrants are taking jobs away from chronically underemployed Americans, many of them African-American people, and that there are relatively simple ways to shore up the U.S. economy by limiting immigration. Rob Sani joins us now. Thank you for coming in, sir. A different topic that we're talking about with you today. Yes. And it's a provocative one. Very emotionally charged, emotionally as you Emotionally charged, and I know you're very emotional about it. Uh, before we get to the uh, meats and potatoes of the book, you are critical of our immigration policy, uh, or ha as it's been over the last several years. Today we have this new initiative, uh, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Young illegal immigrants can now apply for uh, uh, delayed deportation exactly. actions and they can apply for work permits. What do you think about this program? I think to the extent that these children are given a chance to educate themselves, it's absolutely good because an educated person is what our society needs. What I would have liked to see President Obama done is attach a uh, caveat to it where armed with a degree from our colleges in public health or maybe economics or accounting, they would go back to their home countries and serve for two years in their home countries hmm. so they become familiar with the problems in their home countries so that their children don't have to leave so that their children could be the foundation of building Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras because at the end of the day I think it's important that service be part of whatever we offer uh, those who are in this country illegally as well. You also argue that one of the underlying problems is that in some of these other countries, poor countries, uh, uh, because it's so poor there, that's why people want to come here, uh, which we all know, but you say that our government should do something to help support those poor economies. Absolutely. You know, I wrote this book, uh, as you mentioned, I'm a foreign policy expert, so I wrote it from that perspective. If American foreign policy starts focusing on Latin America instead of Pacific, uh, we will create wealth to in, our, uh, in our southern hemisphere. Um, let's, let's just take an example. Today we have 240,000 El Salvadorans in our community in the Washington, D.C. area. Mm -hmm. If we created microloans for these Salvadorans, hardworking folks, to be able to go back to their country, $3 billion is a huge amount of money. So they all pool their resources together, they go back to El Salvador, open up a Chipotle, open up a McDonald's franchise. Now what we have done is we've allowed a group to go back voluntarily, absolutely voluntarily, but then we've created jobs for the African American community. One of here, here in our country, one of the biggest unjust happenings, in my opinion, is that both political parties have abandoned the African American community. And you say that is because the uh, the the young African American community is the those are the people who frequently lose jobs to these uh, to the illegal immigrants that come absolutely in. absolutely today in Ward 8 in Washington DC we have 33 percent unemployment in Baltimore 44 percent of African American teens are unemployed 44 percent when today 1.7 million more young people enter the workforce because of the president's executive order what's going to happen to these young teens it's only natural that they're going to get into trouble and that's not right we need to find justice for both sides of the equation what about the argument that some people make though that you know people you're, you're saying that some of these jobs are going to illegal immigrants but what about the argument that some people make that some uh, some young Americans don't want these jobs otherwise they would be applying for the jobs they don't necessarily apply for the jobs and some of them aren't qualified for even some of the most basic jobs because of lack of education or lack of education opportunities. I don't buy that argument. I think politicians are being very disingenuous to American people when they suggest that you and I are lazy and we don't want to do those jobs. Um, I live in an area where a mile from me is a place called Toby Town. It's um, African American. It's an enclave full of people ready, willing and able to work but they can't. Why? Because when you have a huge pool of labor, wages go down. And when wages go down, who will want to be able to work at five, six dollars an hour? What we need to do is create wealth both south of the border, so there's a magnet for those from Mexico and El Salvador to go back voluntarily, but so that our American population, especially the African American population, gets a chance at the American dream by, by allowing 
uh, this broken immigration system to continue, we are relegating the African American population to third class citizenship. Before we run out of time, I want to show uh, your five points. It's a five sure. point plan to, to improve uh, uh, our immigration policy. And we can put that up on the screen. Uh, and uh, let's start with uh, make English official U.S. language, enforce immigration laws that currently exist, five year immigration moratorium, reevaluate uh, the reunification of families and the like, and promote economic growth in. The, 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 the last point, promoting economic growth, if we just redirect part of our trade from China to Mexico and El Salvador, mm -hmm. last year, Tony, we imported $8 billion worth of toys from communist China. Imagine if we manufactured that in Central America or Mexico. That's the biggest magnet that we could provide for the illegal population and legal population if they so choose to go back. Some, That's what we need to do. Some people might say making English an official, the official language, which many states have declared that, and putting a moratorium on immigration is, is rather harsh. You yourself are the son uh, of immigrants, right? Your, exactly. Your parents came and, and, here from Iran. Absolutely. And, 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 and my experience is if, if I didn't study English, if I didn't know the English language, I wouldn't be sitting here talking with you. It's very important that the immigrant community learn English because studies show their wages increase by 30 percent. So English should be taught. English must be the official language because it's the glue that holds us together. As far as the moratorium, I believe we should keep open the country for refugees who are escaping political persecution, religious persecution. But the moratorium that I'm talking about is so that we can get a handle on our immigration policy. Immigration is directly tied to unemployment to economic vitality of America. Neither political party is addressing it. And that's why I wrote this book, to draw attention to this very critical issue. It impacts our economy. Just very uh, quickly, uh, one word answer, really. Uh, the Obama administration, what grade would you give them uh, on their uh, immigration policy? I think they're spot on in terms of wanting to provide education opportunities, but I would give, uh, but not spot on uh, because I think there's part of electioneering. I, I see a pandering that's going on. One one side panders, one side slanders, and in the middle, America flounders. Okay, we are out of time. I would love to have you back sometime to talk about this more. I would love to too. Hot button issue. Rob Sabani, the uh, book is Press Two for English. We will be right back.